Go to the project that you did and let's find a winner here. All right, absolutely great. And the winner is? Pay attention, Brian. I decided to create an open invitation where anyone from the internet is welcome to step up and go head to head with me in a carpentry competition. This is YouTuber versus real carpenter. Today my competitor is one of the few people who actually signed the contract to step up. He goes by Luke Built. Hi everybody, I'm Luke. Today I am challenging Gord in the Beat the Bully competition. I'm a carpenter with about 10 to 15 years experience building decks, and sheds, fences, and uh, I hope to do good today. What we'll be building today is a staircase. And the rules are simple. We both have the same amount of time, the same amount of space to build to the same parameters with equal access to the same pile of materials. And we'll be building our staircase as best as we can in the six hour time limit we've been given. I'm excited today to be going against Gord. I have a different style from many that I've worked with and hopefully today that comes out and shines against Gord and helps me to win the competition. Going into the competition today, I do feel confident because stairs for me have always been the final boss and I put a lot of effort into making sure I perfect the craft of how to actually build them. I have the upper hand on maybe energy and speed. I'm at a disadvantage because I'm in more of a managerial position lately and I haven't actually been in the field on the tools in quite some time. So I'm a bit rusty. If I can go fast and get it done a little quicker, then I'll have more time to do my final touches and finish work. I am very confident in my finish work. I believe that it's a higher standard than most, and hopefully today it will show in my work. I've seen Luke's work. He can frame fairly quickly, maybe faster than me, and that might be his advantage. Having seen the first two episodes of Beat the Bully, I assume that Gord is going to try to go outside of the box and do something that nobody's ever done before. I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible today. I don't want to get in my own way design-wise or over snaz or complicate this thing, but I do have a tendency to do that once we get rolling because ideas start flowing and I forget that time limits exist. Enough wasting time, let's just get in there and kick his butt. Okay, first things first, you gotta stretch. Putting on my badger tool belt, it's in an awkward spot. Make sure we're tightened up. All right. Belt on. First, we're gonna start over here by measuring, seeing what we have for a rise. From the ground up, we have exactly 59 inches. So when you add the decking, it's gonna be 60. So we gotta do our math from that measurement there. We take 60 and we divide it into how many stairs we want. I don't have a calculator, so off the top of my head, eight would be 7.5. So each drop will be 7.5. I am doing 11 inch run. Now we're gonna cut a template and make sure it works. And hopefully it works on the first go. This being a five by five, we're also five feet high. So five is 60 inches, so 60 inches. We gotta figure out how many steps we need. We're gonna divide that by Divide that into eight steps and you get 7.5 on your rise. In order to establish a rise of 7.5 to have a 35 degree angle, we need to make our run 10 and three quarters of an inch. So my rise be seven and a half. My run's gonna be 10 and three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna make eight steps because I'm gonna use the deck as my first step. I wanna get the top step first. So how we do that, I mark this out here, put a little tick here. So I know where that's gonna go. Slide that down, keep our angle consistent, right where my little tick was. And then this is waist. This is the back of my stringer. And I know I need eight steps, so I'm just gonna work my way down. Since we're in a competition and I have to move quickly, I'm going to just freehand these. Really wanna make these good lines, good strong lines, so that I can see them properly when I cut. I'm gonna gouge them right in. Because we're dropping from a finished staircase on our measurement down to the finished floor, what we wanna do is reduce the thickness of the flooring. So I'm just gonna come in here and remove this little one inch from my last rise. And that's gonna be the bottom. I draw a line this way. Oh, it moved. This is why you're supposed to use your stoppers. You don't need them. I wanna put a two by eight kick plate as my riser, like a structural riser before the actual finished fascia riser goes on. And instead of cutting an inch and a half out of each one of these, I'm simply gonna take an inch and a half right off the back of the first one. And that deficit of a measurement will carry over as I put the two by eight on, it'll correct itself. It'll save us a lot of time and it'll keep a much larger throat, which means more structural stability for the string. And 
This little thing happens to be, you guessed it, an inch and a half. So that gets cut right off. But also, I plan on putting a two by eight behind the stringer to, to build the whole thing. So I'm gonna actually have to do that twice. Take that off again, okay? And that's it. We're gonna have to cut six of these. We'll cut this one first, and then we'll trace it and do five more. Right now I have two different plans in my head. I'm not too sure which way I'm gonna do it. Either way, these stringers will stay the same, but how I finish it with my deck boards will all depend on how much time I have. The hardest part is turning off my OCD and doing this as quick as possible. <laughs> Here's a quick tip. Take the lock off, and you can turn your regular saw into a plunge cutting saw as easy as that. You don't have to worry about the guard sticking as much. And uh, let's get started. Power through, power through. Scariest moment, because if anything's wrong, you gotta do it all over again. Seven and a half, a little low on that one. I might be able to fix it. Yeah, they're good. I'm only out a 16th on this one. Code is an eighth from the adjacent step. So whenever you're building the steps, you wouldn't want to be out more than an eighth. Because this one is a little close, I'm just gonna take a shave out of this one. Let's test the first stringer before we start cutting out the second one. Yes, it works, but there's a catch. One too many steps. So what I'm going to do is next time, I'm gonna to have to cut seven. I forgot to minus the landing. Instead of taking it off the top, which would be your first instinct, it would give us a throat that's much shorter than this. We wanna keep this long back on it, better structural. So what I'm gonna do is take the, off the bottom. Now let's see. Should fit right there. Ooh, wanna get a look at that. Because we're seven and a half, this happens to be seven and a half. I'm gonna come right up under there. If that's level, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna trace this five more times. Now, how it rests, level and square work together. This is level and this is level, and you'll have no gap and no gap. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna do them on every foot. Now I'll use this as a template. Broke. So I'm gonna build nine steps at eight inches exactly, and that will give us a perfect 35 degree step if we do 12 inch runs. Those are fake numbers, I'm just trying to with them. It's a quick way to tell how many stringers you need, you go with the joists. In our case, we're using wear deck decking. It's a structural decking. Some composites you gotta do 12 inch on center, some eight inch on center. In this case, 16 is totally fine. So we get one, two, three, four, five. One thing you have to know when you trace stringers, you always have to cut on the inside of the line, like shy of the line, because the thickness of the pencil will eventually throw you off. And always make sure you use the same stringer as your template. Don't use your second one as your third template. The first one, it's a template for all of them. This is the most time consuming part of stairs. This is where it just gets noisy for 30 minutes. Battery died. Let's do it. Get on there, you. How you doing over there? You got your eight inch by 12 inch? Eight inch by 12 inch? Yeah. Nope, far off. You got something else? Yeah. Oh man. Uh-huh. Wonder what he's building. Not telling you. Don't rush on this part. Well, how many have you cut? You cut only two? Are they wrong? No, no, I'm just... Did you check if your first one even fit the landing no, and was I level? Just, I trust you myself. You cutting without I, checking your I first I trust square? myself too much. Oh my goodness. I trust myself. You're a gambling man. I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna put all these scraps on the ground and just cut the rest on the floor. Man glitter. My plan is to beat Gord. <laughs> Even if I gotta fight dirty. 
this is all damaged. So rather than using this to conserve wood and having your stairs shear off, we just slide down a little bit. This is the last one. Thank God. Cutting stringers is fun. It's probably the most carpentry thing you could ever do is building a set of stairs. <laughs> Woo. These deck boards are special because they're actually structural and they're black, so I don't have to put a pressure treated riser on that and then spray paint it just in case I decide to trim it in a way where there's a reveal. This will hide it or it'll at least look trim. But it's heavy. We're five feet, so I'm just gonna cut these all at five feet. Woohoo! <laughs> just choking. I should have a five foot mark on this somewhere. Right there, I can barely see it because it's black. I gotta go get a white pencil. Beautiful. The problem is I like, I make lots of weird noises all day while I work. Seagull noises and, whew, cut, cut, cut. Put that on after, put that on first. This one right here. Look at that. These black boards are exactly the same height as our rise, so we uh, lucked out on that today. Because sometimes when you use pressure treated lumber, it can vary between seven and a quarter to seven and five eighths, so you don't really know what you're gonna get. We all know the deck gods. They're the ones who determine what's built well and what isn't. Change the lead on this pencil. You can select a color that makes more sense to what we're building. I think white's probably my ideal color for today. And that'll do. Much easier. At 16, we're gonna go three quarter. Three quarter past it. And that is our nailing pattern. So what I'm gonna do is cut the other three of these. You're gonna mark them all at once. Woo! That's why all the old carpenters say, don't do it on your knees, because your back will be killing. But I'm still somewhat young. Straighten out this pile. Okay, square can't do it. This hammer is actually a square, so as long as I mark the back of it, it'll give me a nice square line there. You notice on my tape, all the red marks, they're the 16s. So you don't even have to do the math in your head. You just count when you see a red square, that means you're on center. So you don't have to be a mathematician, you just have to know the tricks. All of them at once, if the lead can handle it. The lead can't handle it. There we go. The colored pencils are always a little soft. Can't be heavy handed, they wear down fast. Beautiful, oh! What is going on here? Look at this. I just assumed it was 20 foot stock. I guess it was 20 foot three inches, which is great, I guess, give me extra, but at the same time, geez. So what I'll do is I'll run this down here. Okay, so those three gotta be cut. Other than that, I measured from that end, so my measurements are okay. We'll survive. What in the world is happening here? Whoa, that don't make sense. This one is way off. I'm gonna have to knock the end of it off very gently. Good thing I checked. Ha, ah, ah, he's giving me ideas here. I think I gotta cut another inch and a half off the front. I forgot about something already. And he gave me the idea. Yeah, I should have cut another inch and a half out of some of these. I should have done this before, but I forgot. So what I'm doing is pretty much the same thing as him, where on the face of each one, I'll put a piece of framing in so that I have something to screw all of my deck boards to. If not, you'd have gaps. I just want to have extra screw points for all my deck boards so that I can get crazy with my deck boards. It's the first time trying this way. So I can cut that and use that as a template again instead. So best thing I can do in this scenario is try to fix it with the least evasive surgery possible. This stringers are very sensitive. Corners on these things break like nothing. I don't wanna have to cut another piece. Oh, got them. And pro tip, you leave those face up. If any intruders or enemies come to your job site, you get that right through their foot. Joking. Cleanly, my goodness. This 
lines up much better than that. Okay, and now we're back on track. Here at Staples. If you're wondering why I'm moving slowly, it's because I don't trust stringers. They're sensitive, they break easy. It's like handling a carton of eggs, for goodness sakes. Love OC. Okay, we're good. If it's off, it's off by a small margin, and in a competition like this, I can't waste time. I gotta finish the thing, so. Let's do this end now, and then we'll start doing the middles. Switch hands, because I'm ambidextrous. That's a college word. It means you can use both hands. I'm out of ammo. Damn. Still cutting stringers? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had to go back a minute. It's gonna make it more beautiful though. Slow and steady wins the race, hopefully. Yeah, I only gotta cut four of these. A little different, and this is just so I can run a board along the front. If I have the right feeling, he's gonna get crazy with the deck boards. And I can maybe catch up then. The design, it's having it all drawn out in your head before you start. I'm just trying to go as quick as possible and not making mistakes. Um, I gotta do the bottom and the backer. Remember I took an extra inch and a half off the back. One was so I could put all of these on and still maintain the same 10 and three quarter. And two, so I could put one on the back and use it as a hanger. I wanna go to hang it on this guy. I gotta uh, rip one because this has gotta be an inch shorter than the rest. So I gotta fire up the table saw and rip one inch off of one of these. I thought it was battery powered, but I guess I brought my corded today by accident. You know what? Could be working on the ground. I'm gonna use this as a table and it becomes portable. Whoa. Fit him right in there. I'll bring that up to an inch and a half clearance. Zero on the angle. One inch, removal. Just one cut with no vacuum, I promise. That'll go right on there. I don't think I got a single shiner. Fun fact, a shiner is when you miss with your nail, sticks through and you can see it shining. I didn't get any today. Normally you'd get some, but I didn't get any. Guess I'm on the ball. It's always smooth, smooth is fast. If that's the saying, I'm gonna keep saying it even if it's the wrong saying, because it makes sense for me today. All right, now I can just grab this. Whoa. That's heavy. I got an idea. I didn't even think about this. We gotta lift these on our own? Pretty much whoever doesn't throw their backs out is the one who's gonna win. Became a strongman competition. He's much stronger than I thought he was. Holy. Ooh, yeah. So while it's standing, my backer is going to go right on the back there. Oh no, look at this. Oh no. You can't trust these guys. They're so sensitive. You say one thing to them, you, you tell them to do one thing. You try to, they don't bend at all. But what I do is improvise, patch that up. This one, in order to get it in there, I'm gonna have to sink it all the way to the chuck, I think. Back on track. In theory, this should be able to just go right on. This one, you gotta get low. I don't know how I feel about getting low. All right, let's go. Pop, pop. All right, frame the stairs. I don't know how he's gonna lift that. My stairs weighed, I would say 200, 250 pounds. It's okay to pick up one end. Pick up the whole thing, impossible. At least for me, because I'm not a bodybuilder. I had to think of something. I didn't want to ask for help. I was not supposed to ask for help. So I went and grabbed some ratchet straps and just kind of strung them over under the stringers, over the frame, and started jacking them up into place. Oh yeah, I see what he's doing. Show him the muscles. These things break so easy. This is how I can catch up. Go around with GRKs, make this super duper tough. And now, I just want to catch up to him. Oh man, oh you poor bugger. Ah, I hate wood. Yeah, there we go. Handrails time. I'll start down here. Oh. 
Oh, I really hope this works. Ta-da! Oh yeah, I think we got the good spot where I can hit the screws. So, that's good. Oh, it's beautiful. Wait. I ain't going nowhere. You gotta take a step back. Look at the monstrosity you're slapping together. Now I gotta see what my back tread has to be because I'm gonna have to rip it just a little bit. I gotta rip a half inch off of seven pieces. Uh, ah. Whoa, where are you going? Bring him over, bring him over. <laughs> Ripping on the table saw, it's just no fun. Come on you, what are you doing? The wheelbarrow was moving, so as much as a light pack if it is, I guess it still has wheels, so it's gonna move, I guess. It's gonna look like a staircase soon. I hope I didn't mess anything up. You know what? Look at this. You can see the white wood in between the cracks and if this is all black, that's gonna look ridiculous, you know? We're gonna have to spray at least a little spot that you're gonna see. Should have done it in advance. If you think I'm uh, overthinking it, let me know in the comments. If, if we end up with two very similar quality products, he's gonna start looking with a fine tooth comb. And to me, that's a small detail that could be overlooked. And while I'm at it, I should paint stripe across the sides in case I have a reveal after I do my rising trim. Because I don't want any wood showing on this project. It smells like vanilla and, and diesel. Vanilla Diesel was my uh, OF name. It smells like a math lab. I think I'm going to cheat. Try to get this in first. It's time to go fast. Past the halfway point. I got about an hour and a half for my handrails, an hour and a half for my stair treads. Almost feel like I gotta start running. Probably eliminate all of my miters that I originally planned and do everything on a square cut. This is maybe a little bit of an excessive thing to do when we're at literally the halfway mark in the challenge and maybe we bit off, again, more than I can chew. I'm just gonna get my hands, or just gonna get covered in paint. I don't want one blotch right on the one step. What have I done? I think what I'm gonna do later for the finish, put a strike here. Here. Just in case there's any wood showing later, this will take care of it. How are you feeling over there? You think you're gonna finish this thing? I hope so. Even if you don't, it's okay. You can just drop your stuff now and give up. Now the stringers are black underneath. That's all we ever wanted. Keep this space consistent. And Bob is your uncle. It's hard to go fast and not mess anything up. It would be worse to go backwards at this point. Just breathe and make it happen. Don't fall on me, please. Now it's time to cut a whole bunch of material. Start on my stairs, 14 grays for now. It looks light, but it's really heavy. Whoops, five feet. I wish I had a jig, something to speed this. Considering managing my time, quite a few things to get done and I need to kind of budget it to find out if I'm gonna be able to finish this or not. Certain measures have to be taken. Build it so that if I'm forced to stop everything before I felt ready, it still looks okay. So I gotta prioritize things that are non-negotiable like the handrail, like a fancy riser or a fancy nosing is not as uh, important as the handrail is. Move this one over a little bit so that we can trim it properly. I'm gonna have to put one random screw in so it doesn't all shift back into the same previous hole. I'll hide it over here. Won't be seen as much. Whew. 
Stairs look like stairs. All right, so I wanna work on my nosing and then I'm gonna put my handrail and then I'm gonna work on decorations after that. One thing I'm certain of is the angle of my stairs. I established the angle of my stairs on purpose so it'd be easier to cut the trim. Now, everything is 35 degrees. The balusters, the trim, the angle of the back of the stringer, everything. Setting our saw up to 35, locking it in, making a cut and uh, going from there. Might slow me down a bit, cutting each and every one individually, but I'm too much of a perfectionist. More things to save time. I don't think I'm gonna put a gap on these. That way I don't have to spray paint the wood. Being that this is an indoor staircase and water doesn't need to drip through it. Start with the hardest ones. We do a notch cut on these. Same thing on this side. So this should flow with the angle of the stringer, which it does not. What on earth is going on here? Thought we were at 35. What are we at? This will also determine our angle, which says it's 35. So the back of my stringer must be this one. Okay, so let's cut that, the other side of it. It might be slightly more acute than we can handle on this saw, which means I need to come out like this, unless we go this way. Mm, mm, mm. Doesn't want to go, but it will. Okay, so my angle here says it's 35. What on earth is going on here? This says it's 35, Stringer says it's 35. We're gonna have to figure it out. I have no idea what happened. I must have uh, fallen asleep as part of the class. Pretty sure this has never been a problem for me before. But here we are today. Cause that ain't no 35 degrees. We're taking it from 90, we'd be 55. It's in 35, 90, 55 degrees. It's the only math that, that actually checks out in my head and that's perfect. If the angle uh, on our stairs is 35, then we take a 90 degree angle, to track 35, we have 55. And let's see if the 55 works. That looks good. So that's what we were looking for all along. Is that so hard? No, it wasn't. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we made at least 20 inches. I gave myself a little bit extra. A little bit wasteful, but um, I think just to get this first one right, maybe this is the best one to do first. Line that up. From here, we're gonna go 45 that way. I'm comfortable with that. But what I wanna do is this real quick, just in case any of this is showing at the end and I don't have time to put trim on it, having wood showing. Oh, he's spray painting over the nails? Paint right over the shiner. No one will be the wiser. Are you spray painting the nails? Nope. Nope, 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 I would never do that. <laughs> I like to start from the bottom up because then you get a stair every time to sit on while you do the next one. These screws are pretty cool. They have a reverse thread, so when they go into the deck board, they pull the deck board and the framing together at the same time, and they're almost impossible to remove. So if you mess up, you got a big mess. Face to face. Okay, gotta be a better way to do this, but today, I don't have it. What I do have is a good attitude. This is the cheek of the cut, same thing. Turn this to 45 this way, see if I can just chop it. It's, I did it wrong. Oh, I can use them for the other side, okay. Good, 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 because seven on this side, seven on that side. I started acting faster here. Usually I go check the other side before I screwed this down to make sure I cut it correctly. We're just gonna pray today that it did. I'm skipping the middle because I'm in a competition. I would always screw here and here. Hopefully the judge doesn't notice. If I have time, I'll, I'll come back and screw these off. I'm gonna get some spray paint and hide that. Just so when you look down, it just looks like a little bit of a gap. At the customer's house, that would not go in. Easy. Oh, I got this thing. That's a bad one. Forgot I'm mic'd up. Cheek to cheek should be 60. So if I go 63 and 18. Eight. 
looking pretty cool, I must admit. We'll get a rhythm of this as soon as we're done. That's when we'll start to pick up our rhythm. I'm thinking there's probably a hundred ways this could have been more efficient, but can't think of them right now. I don't want to leave a, uh, too big of a margin for error and have everything cut in advance and it not fit. So I'm just fitting as I go to make sure I don't end up doing the same thing twice. And if I do make a mistake, it'll be much easier to fix than if I cut every single piece and they all don't fit. Then we're basically just done. I don't think I'm going to get done what I thought I was going to get done. I do this every time. I just picture how glorious the finished product could be and I get locked in and I do this on my own job sites obviously too. Uh, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Now these go on the front. These will be half of my risers. I'll have black and then I'll have a strip of gray. Now that's out of square right now because I'm on an angle and I lift this up. Hopefully it squares that. If not, I don't got time. He's getting pretty. Uh-oh, he's up in the ante a bit. Try to speed stuff up, tack a screw in each one quickly. That way I don't have to go back and forth so much. Just gonna cut two little spacers that'll help me hold it. Now you don't want this lip higher than the step because when you're coming down the step, if this was up here, it's a tripping hazard. So with this, I like to just go a hair lower than the step itself. Yeah, inch and seven eighths times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four boards, cut it five feet, and then I'll rip. Four of those. Now I rip them at an inch and seven eighths. Oh yeah. Right? This gives it a contrast. I leave the gap here and not here because if I pull this up, then you end up seeing the imperfections underneath. When you're walking up the stairs, you're gonna see this line over this line. It's pretty quick once you get a system. As carpenters, we always think we're the best. We're better than God himself. We think we can do everything. Sometimes you gotta humble and just do the basic. I think that looks pretty. So now I'm gonna do the sides. I'm gonna have an issue with, I think some of the bevels aren't gonna be perfect. We'll see what I can get away with. It's not good. If I'm budgeting my time, this should be done. So that's not great. Just gotta keep moving, keep moving. Gotta make some decisions now. See how quickly I can get the handrail installed. Hopefully I get the handrail done in 30 minutes. Save myself a little bit of time. One more sidewinder, and then we're just cutting some clean bevels. 45, then handrail, then see what we can do for trim to hide the ugly. Oh no, we only had one DeWalt charger going? Are you kidding me? What the f how am I supposed to run a miter saw with one battery? Oh no, it's all right, I'll play fair, still mine. Not a battery in the land. Gotta take him up on his offer. Holy shit. That's probably why he's been struggling to cut for me. I forgot it was cordless. I thought it was a charge plugged in miter saw. It's the last sidewinder? Of course. See one more, what could go wrong? I'm gonna kind of do the handrails and the sides at once. Quick way to figure out my angle. Hold this in place, just like this. So that's gonna be how my bottom rail goes. Cut a line. I'm gonna hold pressure, pray it don't move. I believe this is gonna be around a 30 to 35 degree angle. When you stay within the seven to 11 rule, then you end up in around a 30 degree angle. So I come over to the saw. I don't need to ask the saw what the angle is. On a speed square, we have an angle finder. You go to the toe or the long, line up your line. When you come down here, around a 35 degree angle. So 30 to 35, I was on the far side. So now I go to 35 on here. We're on the final stretch here. But healthy competition is the best competition, boys. Kind of bring on bad karma if I wish bad for him. That's when I'll get it. And everything's going too smooth. Now what I want to try to do is I'm going to run a board that goes on a 35 and down. I'm trying to move as fast as possible it sucks. These are the two man tasks. It ain't perfect, it ain't perfect. And 94 and a half. 
I did it upside down, but it'll work on this side. <laughs> Something like that, I kinda messed it up. It's gonna have to work. I think the next one I'll do a hair longer. It's right in the center, it'll hold it up for me. Wow, what a great invention. Definitely not its intended purpose, but why not, right? Perfection, not happening. He's moving, he's got his risers, he's got his treads. It's looking cool. My biggest fear is I don't finish what I'm doing. As cool as it might be, if I don't finish it, done. This is hazardous. Normally on a job site, you wanna clean up as you go. I promise I'll clean up. As soon as the guy yells stop, that's when we'll clean up. It's gonna go like that. I think I'm just gonna use my belly. Belly comes in handy sometimes. Before I do this, I'm gonna get spray paint happy. what we call the trailer park special. Sorry to all the people who live in the trailer, trailer park. There is a gap and you look down and it'll just be black. Catching up to you. It's a real competition. Now, the only thing I don't like is a cut end like this. In real life, I would have did a compound miter. Or with wood, that would be fine because you could sand it and hide it. But with composite, you never want to see the end of a cut. Maybe I can spray paint it and that will, <laughs> that'll hide it. Uh-oh, I got spray paint all over the deck. Uh, rags. Ooh. Whoopsies. I thought this was gonna be a cakewalk. For the next contestant that has to go against them. He moves pretty fast. We got about an hour and a half, not even. Almost neck and neck in my opinion. How's it going there? Oh, I'm trying to go fast enough. Surprised you didn't just copy my idea. Distracted me, that's what he's doing. All right, now I can actually start again. Looks pretty good. Let's get this handrail going. Handrail time, yay. Oh, the other impulse cap. One impulse cap. What the is going on here. I don't have time. You know, quick way to open these. If you're wondering why I did all that framing earlier underneath, it was to catch this. That was the reason. It's something to grab these lag bolts with. Get most of the way down. Slip a shim in here. This is it good. Obviously I need an extension of some kind to get these in. It's not fantastic, I'll tell you that. What is the size of six foot? I clearly need more than six feet. I don't have my knife with me anymore. Okay, very short, but they also sent me the extender. These things here, put them together. Rat bastard plastic everywhere. I have to run this through the saw in order to get this to fit a little more snuggly. Let's see if I cut it. Maybe if that's clean without the paint, it'll take to the joint a little bit better without forcing it in. How on earth is that supposed to go? Oh my God. What is, is there an easy way to do this? Probably. Am I gonna figure it out today? No. Oh, you've got to be joking. Nightmare. There's no definitive middle rail here. This is for my spindles. It's too easy. <laughs> Unreal. What the f am I supposed to do with that? I have two white ones and two black ones, so the white ones are just not good. Yep, that's all I can do. The seam isn't great. Doesn't look amazing. Cut it right here, and then I can do the other one the same.
Well, whatever we have here, none of it makes any sense. So I'm just gonna Frankenstein together a handrail as best I can. There's some odd number of stairs. I don't know what else to do here other than put this in. I'm gonna do double the work, half the fun. That's the plastic. That joint looks horrible. Maybe it's better the joint goes right in the middle. I should have waited to cut it, lined it up, tried to get the joint right in the center and then cut the ends. Too late for that now, I think. Unless I can get another one of those. More packaging. More packaging. Wasting time on packaging. Bad. So we can fit the extension on. A little bit easier than last time because there's paint and a powder coating on the inside giving us a little bit of a hard time at binding the extension. It would have been nice to do sell these in 12 feet. Would have been perfect, but nope. We've got two six-footers to put together. Be nice if I can just get these in. Go in. Thank you. I just drove those in. Oh, please be joking. You know I should have put a set screw. Ooh. Maybe if I put a screw right here, right in the belly, you won't really be seen. I'm gonna hold this thing steady for us. Stop the extension from moving while I'm hammering on it. It's not bad, the screws are pretty smooth. Whoa! Some idiot forgot to screw that down. Not too bad, not too many scratches on it. All I have to do is put these in and the top rails on. I found a simpler solution for those top rails too after looking at it for a minute where I won't do any cutting of the posts. I'm just gonna miter a cap on the post. Hopefully that'll help me speed up too. I don't love it but it's there now. You know what? Maybe I'll just leave my handrail like this. I don't have enough parts anyways. I think I'm just gonna dress it up. See what we can do here. I don't know what else to do. So, and yours looks good, buddy. I want him kinda gourd, but I'm starting to feel bad for him over there. Starting to have a heavy heart for Gordy. Severe issues, um, all the handrail stuff. We're supposed to have enough that either of us could choose from aluminum handrail, wood, whatever we wanted, and have enough to do two of every color. I don't even have enough to do one of one color, so I'm forced to improvise at this point. And uh, there's so many updates happening, and we just, it's not the right time for it. So I'm, this is not, this is satin. I think it's a high gloss, but I don't have time. So I'm just gonna turn this black real quick. It's actually, you know what? That's fine, that's fine. Because the last thing we need is a hollow handrail that the judge can just look right down and see. So, you know what? the packaging, I swear. Let's give this a quick touch up. This is improvisation. Do you think he'll know I painted that one? I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes before I put it on. Pray that nobody notices. I'm gonna work on my stairs for now. I'm gonna try to Frankenstein together a handrail, but I, I gotta work on the stairs because if I don't have enough to build the proper handrail, I at least need to make sure the stairs look good. That's my only hope. Normally I would miter this, but today I, I don't have what it takes to do that. Just gonna have to do some butt joints and hope for the best. Time to put some lipstick on a pig. Time consuming, but this is a more custom way in my approach. It's an easy solution to make, make your own handrails. You don't have to buy some expensive handrail system. These boxes cost $100 a box. 
Does about 15 linear feet. Oh, he did do stone. I knew it. <laughs> I will agree that stone is great stuff. It goes on with a brad nail. One hell of a competition this has been. Pretty neck and neck. Here we go. Here we go. I figured he's gonna look at this side more. So. This is so tedious. If that judge shows up and I don't make it, oh, it's gonna suck. Give it a little tap ski. Do, 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 do. Man, my weird noise is boop, boop. Top, up. Whew, okay. Oh, when the muscles get sore, it's so hard to move fast. Oh, yeah. The reason I'm hitting this is because you'll never see it. It's gonna be underneath the top rail. Can you get these all nice and tight. <laughs> Thank goodness we picked the only stone that can be cut with wood tools because getting a whole new set of tools today would have been an extra stressor that we didn't need. Time for my favorite thing, opening more packages. Because today has been the day of all packaging and packaging. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's the joke about making the best to turn tragedy to triumph. Look, these are all broken. Oh no. Gonna reload. It's like an arcade game. Yep. And we'll start wrapping. Starting with this guy right here. Try to turn my cuts inward so we don't see them just in case there's ever any exposure at all. Chip and chisel make it way worse. Something isn't level here. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna make it level. What does he say? Bully the wood? The, I'm gonna wood bully. I'm gonna bully the wood. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeehaw. It worked. Use the belly again. Oh, that's, that's good. Except for my little gap. I wouldn't have that in real life. Oh, no, that screw came out. It actually broke. Might have deflected off of something. I made a boo-boo. I missed the screw when I came through on my angle. Try to smoosh it back in so you can't see it through. Maybe a little spray paint. I'm cheating now. Okay, that's good. So I'm gonna come down with a two by six, run it to here and run it and end it. Oh, and then go down maybe. And then maybe cascade down the front of this with gray. Just because uh, same thing as down here. I don't like to see end green. That'll end up being an end green. So it'll go boom, boom, and boom. 88 and three quarters. Stuff is heavy, man. Coming down to crunch time. Really? An hour of power, and then it's over. And let the judges decide. The judge. That gives me one hour to do the bottom rail. So then it'll go kadoom and down. It's like five and three eighths, and I'll just make it a hair longer so that I have shave room if I make a mistake. No, this is wrong, isn't it? This is wrong. That's okay. I have to go the other way. <laughs> ah, no. That's square. Even us carpenters, we get confused from time to time. That's a square cut. I think about being a carpenter. We're not perfect. We're just trying to figure it out. I think it's gonna have to be what it is. Technically, this should be a 45. I'm gonna cut this again a bit better. At least once you do one side, you have the other side figured out. Oh, man, how many times did I mess up on one piece? I'm getting too tired. How much of this crap looks good? How much of it looks like crap? I mean, it's pretty cool. I have to admit it, I don't love this part. I'd rather have them lap the other way. I don't know why I did it this way. I wasn't thinking. I was just rushing. Don't rush. When time is limited, stay calm. There's some advice for you. If your time is limited, stay calm. It's 10 times better like that. You're so close to finish and you're panicking now. Woo, there we 
go. Now I'll put a 45 down. When I screw these in, hopefully I can tighten these miters up a little bit. I'm gonna go 41 and a quarter. 41 and a quarter to the toe. The hair long, maybe? I'm gonna have to make it work. Just a little bit of tomfoolery and I'm gonna make this work. I'm not 100% on the look of it, but because this is hollow, I have no way to really screw this in. So I'm hoping that I can figure it out. This is all experimental. Whoa, don't pant, just keep following it. And it should close up. Oh, whoa. Oh. Last stone. Of course I have to open the fresh box to get the last one. Let's see if these caps are dry. Okay, put those in at the top. Oops. This is supposed to be five and a half. Okay, that needs a set screw in it. It's gonna look really funny later. It's off by quite a bit. And that won't come out. This doesn't have the torque. Maybe if I set it to one. Wow, I should switch to DeWalt. Wouldn't give me this kind of trouble. I'm gonna try to screw into it. This is something I usually don't do, but like I said, I have nothing underneath this. Man, this is not as pretty as I wanted it. This is the panicky moment. So here, just trying to, trying to finish. Oh, you're getting tired. I have a, a final trick that I don't like to do, but it's called, it's called rounding these. So that's telling me that the 45 is out. Something is out of level, something is out of square. And it's just gonna have to be what it is. I hate it. I hate it. And temporarily it closes it. This is the, the poo poo contractor special. Teaching the kids how to do crappy work. This is not how I would do it at a normal job. This is panic mode right here. <laughs> it's gonna have to be what it is. I am cheating so hard right now. Let's go straight. This is where you wish you could just hug the whole thing. It worked. Ah, see? It moves this. This is what it is. It's gotta be imperfection somewhere. I'm just gonna screw it down to the two by four and not to the post. One, because I know the two by four will hold the screw properly. I'll just leave it like that. That's pretty good. Trying to set these bottoms. I've never done it before, so we'll see how it goes. So this is, what is this? Let's see what they're doing. That will go this way. So I'm gonna have to improvise. I'm not sure if I can get these exactly as the manufacturer recommends because I have no idea if this is my handle. I gotta come up a bit. Okay, so the old system was really simple. I go put my bracket on, 28 5 8 again. This system, I have no idea. That goes on there, like so. Good Lord, all right. No time to waste. That's pretty much right where I am. Okay, looks good. Once we get one in, the other three should go in like, like nothing. Is this a joke? That's not going in there. I got one screw gonna go in. Let's see if we can make it happen. It'll do. It'll do for what we're doing. Okay, please do it right in the first go. Ta-da, so that was square to a 45. Oh, that came out way nicer than that side. I'm gonna put a middle one in, and then I'll put a middle one on that one to match it. This is a little trickier than I thought it was gonna be. 30 minutes remaining in today's Beat the Bully competition. And then it's over. I'm pulling these guys off the tools. Who will win? This 
10. Okay. Just to hold that spacer. I've seen worse things get put together with less knowledge. Beautiful. Do I have enough room for one more sheet of glass? Yes, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to figure out maybe slide this one forward a little bit. It'll have to do. Okay. There's none of the right number of the right stuff. Complete frank and f Get in there. Seems to be having trouble staying in place. I have no choice. I have to put a set screw right there because it's gonna try to keep moving on me. Oh, look at that. Hopefully that just fits right in. That's just straight up too short. How did that happen? I can't believe this. Oh no. The screw came up front. Ta-da! Eventually that might open up. As long as it stays nice for the judge, I'm happy. I actually don't want it to move. It looks really good right where it is. A little bit of redneck engineering. Tom Foolery. Spray paint, where'd you go? Mine. This is mine now. Oh yeah. I'll never know. How are they gonna know? and GRKs through this. That ain't going anywhere. <laughs> okay, I gotta go into the abyss here. The stringers that I hung off of the drop box. You're supposed to have either carriage bolts or these GRKs. So you're tying everything, the drop blocks and both rims and the stairs all together. You're supposed to do it before so you're not like this. Ah, oh, that echoed. It sounds like a dirt bike or a Harley or something under here. Try to get a little bit higher. See if that's gonna make us a difference in getting this glass placed. Mm. These gaskets are a joke. I realized that, yes, the clear ones are probably supposed to be on top. Nope, don't you dare. I'm just gonna put another set screw in that one so it doesn't fall out. I ended up going a little higher on that one. I beat the clock. That should be automatic win. Oh. Usually us contractors take like six weeks too long on every job we do, but not today. This is how customers could get their money out of us too. They could just make us do it in competition. So much plastic. It's coming down to the wire. Too close to call, too cold to hold, too hot to touch. Cheating again. Look at that. You try to fix it and make it worse. I feel bad for him that his handrails didn't show up properly and he actually still made it work, which is really impressive. He's probably gonna win. That's a beautiful looking staircase he made. Okay, I'm just gonna finish screwing off some boards, I guess. Down to the nitty gritty. It is what it is, man. What are we supposed to do about that? Nothing. There's nothing we can do about that. Okay. More packages. I hope the judge likes it. I really do. Drop those tools! It's over! It's looking good, boys. Whew. I'm glad I'm not the judge, because then I would have to make a decision, and I'm a little indecisive. I feel bad for the judge. I don't feel confident at all. Came right down to the wire on that one. So many things I would have loved to do differently. I would have loved to do bevel joints on the stone on the stairs. I could have put lighting in the glass, but at the end of the day, it's a miracle that I even finished. Both of us were really truly competing to beat each other. There's a couple flaws that I made on the bottom of my stringers. You can see a bit of my cuts and stuff like that. Gaps didn't close up, but with the timeline, I just had to keep going forth. I couldn't go backwards at all. Building a staircase like that in six hours was grueling and exhausting and a lifetime experience for sure. I will uh, definitely remember this whole day for the rest of my life. What I was not expecting is 
looks to look as good as it does. It's just pleasing to the eye. And uh, he chose a design that was a little more simplistic and I think the majority of people would go with his design. One of my downfalls on this was that I didn't have one set plan. Hopefully the judge won't notice all of the little things and uh, I will still win the competition. Today, the judge is going to be none other than the Deck Da Vinci. In my opinion, he's the best designer of decks on the planet. My name is Robert, Deck Da Vinci Hotachek. I had the opportunity to work with some of the very best builders and designers in the world. We're the guys that get called when you want to do a 15-foot cantilever off a cliff, or currently, as I'm building right now, putting a 13,000-pound spa 26 feet up in the air. I want you to be honest. You don't know who built what. We're right. not going to tell you until mm -hmm. after the winner is chosen. So use your best judgment. I'm going to get out of your hair and let you be as mean as possible. Oh, I will. <laughs> well, these are interesting. Some details I haven't seen before. Aesthetically, first, I kind of get attracted to this. Nice, clean finish, kind of unique with the skirting. Being in a six hour competition, I'm not going to be too critical. Of, well, yeah, I will be. I can't stand seeing screws, but the miters look clean. The reveal looks good. It seems solid. I think for railings, you know, having the pickets and the glass down the side, I mean, there's there's always pros and cons to it. Having glass on railings is sometimes nice for a view, but going down the stairs, having something a little bit more secure like pickets are probably a little bit better on a design perspective. You know, let's see consistency. Somebody did some basic math, so that's good. I think it's got a decent look. I'd probably change up the colors, I'd change up the look a little bit, but I mean, in overall appearance and for competition wise, not a, Bad version, I guess. Oh, right off the bat, aesthetically, a bunch of things that just, if anybody knows me personally, I can't stand seeing open miters. I can't stand seeing open face off of a cut board. And then of course those screws being exposed absolutely drives me berserk as a designer. You know, every detail matters. Try to make things look pretty and try to get unique. Functionality and longevity is actually more important. Handrails, depending on what uh, municipality you're in, this may not fly personally, but you know, here we go. We got pickets on the stairs and they look half decent. People went to basic math school, so we're okay for, well, maybe not. We need a little, uh, a little practice there. This being sturdy, being strong, I guess we're good that way. That thing here is gonna come off in a couple years. Absolutely. It is only six hours, so, you know, God bless your soul. I think if you actually come up a little bit closer, seeing this reveal here, I don't know how many customers would actually appreciate that. Color combinations, different unique look when you have, you know, a flush board. Geez, uh, those screws really piss me off. And having materials that aren't cleaned up or cleaned up for the customers, uh, in my world, very important. You know, washing all the decks down. Underneath, typical construction. It's all fine in there. Now, being a different material, uh, using the OC lumber, I think they could get away with it, but blocking in the steps a little bit more. Seeing that there isn't a picture frame, that's, that's okay, but I think giving it a little bit more strength and integrity is probably a good thing. Do I want to, or do I not? I'll be nice, but I think I could probably pull some of this apart. My bare hand, which, you know, as crazy some customers might actually say their raccoon in the neighborhood would tear it apart on them. Other than that, I think that's all I could say. All right, guys, I think looking at each project, there's some pros and cons to both of them. Some of it might be just me as a very picky bastard, but totally understanding that it is only six hours. So let's start with this one over here. Choices like balusters going down the stairs, in my opinion, is a must. You know, I'm not a big fan of having glass going down the stairs. It's more for safety. Whenever you're on an upper deck, putting glass is fine, but going down the stairs, I always feel it needs to be something a little bit stronger than just glass slits going down. The treads on this one are a lighter color. Having a dark color tread, even though it looks really pretty, the reality to it is in a real world atmosphere, it's gonna get mucked up and dirty in a heartbeat just by weather alone. So it's always gonna look disgusting. Personally, love the aluminum railing on this one. And I love the opportunity to use a different medium as the skirting. But on a build perspective, there are some loose sides and some areas that I could probably pull off with my hand. On the flip side here, absolutely hate waterfall cuts like that where it's an exposed gap 
Um, that's just a recipe for that to open up a long term. Might be the material, might be the, the time frame, but having to see screws and deck boards drives me berserk too. Finding a way to hide screws, especially in very apparent positions, are super important for me. And then the column size on this one, not a big fan. The fascia going up the side, having an exposed edge there. In my world, my customers would never accept that. Overall, both projects look great. The time frame absolutely explains a lot of the choices made. Why don't you guys go to the project that you did and let's find a winner here. All right, absolutely great. And the winner is Gord. Boom! <laughs> I honestly thought I was gonna lose that yeah. one. I genuinely Close, was, was like, bit for bit. oh my God, I'm finished. <laughs> and now you're my favorite designer of all time. Well, I hope Thank so. You, you already were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Thanks absolutely. for everything, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to see us build something different, drop it in the comments below. And if you think you could do this better, Fill out the form, sign the contract, and put your nuts and bolts on the table. 